Good morning and welcome to today's video. Today is Wednesday and I am doing a pretty easy ride today. Just gonna do some easy spinning, nothing crazy. I'm about to ride down from Copper Mountain to Frisco and there's a little peninsula you can ride around down there. So I think it's a trail. I think it's a pretty easy trail. I don't think there, I think there's barely more than a thousand foot of elevation change on this little route and probably more than half of that is climbing back up to Copper Mountain. There's not a lot going on and I plan to just do as much relaxing as possible. Let's get this ride started. Paint trail is pretty busy this time of the afternoon. Lots of riders. Pretty cool to see though. Inside the city of Frisco, there's a ton of cool bike paths. Alright, we have made it to the perimeter trail. It is a little trail that goes along the peninsula here around this lake by Frisco. Pretty pretty cool little trail. Pretty pretty nice views out here. The perimeter trail is pretty cool. The ride out to Copper to Frisco and then we rode the perimeter trail around the peninsula and it was a pretty cool little trail. It was a little single track trail, not super rocky. There was a couple of spots where it was a little rocky and just a tad bit washed out, but not too bad at all. Overall, a really good trip for kind of an easier day. The climb back up to Copper was the hardest thing that we actually did all day. We got some stuff here. Um, Frank went to Walmart and he grabbed some things that we're gonna need for the race. So like some big Ziploc bags. These are to put our name and bib number on them and leave at some of the aid stations. Um, we do have Sean and Bryce sagging for us, but because they're trying to sag for both of us, we're worried that we may need things in between so we're gonna we're gonna play it safe and drop a few things at some of the aid stations he also got a notebook for me to write some strategies down in and for us to plan our nutrition i got me some ramen for some point mini cokes which you know are pretty critical um those cookies are always part of every ride plan the timer on the centurylink website the centurylink leadville website says three days 14 hours 17 minutes and 39 seconds until the race starts Man, I, it's crazy because I remember when our countdown was at four months and thinking four months is a lot of time, but man, that time obviously went very quick. I don't remember the last time that I used a mechanical pencil. So I'm doing a little bit of organization. Our SAG crew arrives tomorrow. But once they get here, we're gonna be really busy. We've got a lot of stuff to do. So I'm trying to get as many of our plans finalized and decided on what we want so that when they get here, we can tell them, I need this at Twin Lakes outbound, I need this at Twin Lakes inbound, I need this at Powerline, and I need every piece of pizza, ice cream, and cake that you can find at the finish line. That's my current plan with approximation of arrival times. I think that's important to be able to give Sean and Bryce a heads up of when I'm gonna be there. Now I need to start gathering my nutrition and I'm gonna put them in Ziploc bags and label them. So basically, when I get to Twin Lakes at the Lost Canyon aid station, they'll be able to grab the bag for that and give me the items from that. And there's no confusion of, do you need this, this, this? It's like, here are the items you wanted for that aid station. So when I get there, they have all the items for that particular SAG ready to go. They'll take the trash out of my pocket. They'll put the new goos and the new nutrition items in into my other pocket. I also have them ask me a couple of things. For example, I don't know how the weather's gonna be at this point in the race, so I'm gonna ask them if they need to take my arm warmers. Basically just a couple of small things like that. And then I'm gonna start the Columbine climb. I'm gonna be gone pretty close to three hours. So while I'm gone, I'm gonna have them leave the Lost Canyon aid station and head back to Twin Lakes Dam. The whole point is that I'm getting them to go on the other side 
of the chip timer. And the reason for that is that if something happens, for example, I have a mechanical, it takes me time to get it fixed, they're moving behind the timer so that I don't sag in front of it and, and that cause me extra time to possibly get pulled from the course. At this point, I'm probably gonna be like maybe 63, 65 miles into the race. So not only are they gonna replenish my bottle, my Camelback, I'm gonna collect the goose to get me to the next sag point. And also at this point, I'm gonna eat some ramen noodles, probably drink a uh, Coke and uh, have them lube my chain, clean my glasses and ask me about my arm warmers again. The next aid station on the course is Pipeline. But when we rode this section, you kind of ride this section like it's a real full on roadie course. And what I mean by that is that you're just trucking along. And when I got the Pipeline, I really didn't want to stop. Uh, mostly because it's just a couple miles away from the bottom of Powerline, and Powerline's gonna be crazy anyways. My thought is to go past Pipeline and get to the base of Powerline, where Sean's gonna be anyways, and have him go ahead and restock me there. So it says Brinker Lost Canyon Outbound. This is a bag for Sean and Bryce. So like I said, they're gonna grab this bag and start handing me the crap inside of it. Got a pickle juice here. Uh, this pickle juice shot is going to be meant to be taken pretty early in the climb. This is to keep me topped up and ahead of the muscle cramps. This is all that I need in my bag to make it up Columbine and back down to the SAG crew. That's basically my nutrition plan for the Leadville Trail 100 mountain bike race. I pick so many goos because when I do cross country racing, that's what I rely on. Mostly because it's really quick to get down and it's sugar and some of those flavors taste really good. I am a little bit nervous about putting that many of those in my stomach over the course of maybe a 12 hour race. So I am going to try to lean on the chews and the bars as much as I, as much as I can. I do believe that when I first got here, it was hard to eat much of anything. I noticed that even the goos were sometimes hard to eat, but I think that's gotten better in the past week and a half. Now on the climbs, that's still a different story. I think the only thing to do on those is a goo, and maybe sometimes it's easier to eat a goo on the descents too. I'm gonna try to stay ahead of the cramps as much as I can. And really that's basically it. So I'm gonna spend the rest of my night getting the rest of my nutrition bags ready and just finalizing my plans, probably looking at a couple more time splits just to get an idea of what my pacing is gonna be like for the course. So in the morning, we're going to pick up Bryce and Sean and they will be joining the videos. And uh, really that's it for today. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.